And when it comes to printing human body parts, the future is already here. Just in the last few months, we have seen some pretty incredible results. One woman received a 3D printed ear implant made from her own cells as part of a, a clinical trial. Doctors in France were able to grow a new nose for a cancer patient using 3D printed cartilage. And get this, researchers at MIT can now print 3D replicas of the human heart. The team has developed a robotic system to control soft 3D printed replicas of a patient's heart that can be actuated to mimic the patient's blood pumping ability. The procedure involves first inverting medical images of a patient's heart into a three-dimensional computer model, which the researchers can then 3D print using a soft polymer-based ink. The result is a soft, flexible shell in the exact shape of the patient's own heart. Uh, wild, right? Anytime I see something like that, I call NBC News medical fellow, Dr. Akshay Sayal. He joins us now. Uh, doctor, oh, why does this matter? What implications does this have on the future of organ transplants? Yeah, good evening, Gaudi. The, the simple way to put it is we do not have enough organs out there for all the people who need organ transplants. Uh, every year, there's about 100,000 people on the organ transplant list, and about 17 people die every day waiting for an organ transplant. So that's why you're seeing a lot of excitement about this. We really need a way to solve that shortage of organ transplants, you know, for patients who have kidney disease and heart disease and liver disease. Um, you and I spoke a few weeks ago about a patient who needed a heart transplant who almost didn't get one. Um, so that's really why you're seeing the excitement about this growing growing an organ in a lab as opposed to waiting for an organ to become available. And how does this actually work? Explain the process uh, from design and printing. We saw a little bit of the printing there uh, to physically making a 3D organ part for the, the human body. Yeah, it's, it's pretty complicated, but I'll try to break it down here. And basically, <laughs> what you do is you take a piece of tissue sample, or a little piece of sample of an organ that you want. Um, say you, you're in need of a kidney transplant. You can take a piece of that, about the size of a postcard, um, and you mix that with a bunch of fancy chemicals, and then you put that into a, literally a 3D printer. Um, so if you think about a colored printer that uses ink to, to you know, combine a bunch of colors together to get the final product, you're taking a bunch of cells, and you're kind of mixing them together and combining them together, and then the 3D printer kind of layers them on top of each other until you literally get a 3D printed organ. But Gadi, I think the most important point here to drive home, because this is coming from a patient's sample, you don't have to take those immunosuppressive medications, those, those medications that prevent uh, organ transplant rejection um, that can actually weaken your immune system and make you more likely to get sick from things like COVID. Uh, I was expecting like an hour long answer and I was ready for it. I was get, getting ready to sit down and listen to all of it. I don't know how you just summed that up in like uh, two minutes. I want to know, though, how is this even regulated? This seems like a very uh, brave new world. And, and how far off are we from seeing this become a, a huge thing that doctors and hospitals are, are using on a daily basis? Yeah, so the experts really at Wake Forest who are leading the charge of this, you know, they think about 10 years out is where we are right now. Um, and if you look, if you guess, you know, the most, the, the organ we're most in need of a transplant for right now, it's actually kidney disease. Um, I think it's about 90% of, of patients who are in need of an organ transplant are waiting for a new kidney. Um, is, like you see on the screen here, about 100,000 people waiting for an organ transplant. But to answer your question, we don't really know how it's going to be relegated, how it's going to be regulated. I think that really the important thing to drive home is we need to figure out ahead of time how we're going to get this to people who need it most. Because when we go back to the kidney, the people who need it most, over 50% of those waiting for a kidney are minority populations. You want to make sure they are included uh, in, in, in talks to get access to this as well. And I, I just want to wrap here, Gotti. I know I said this is 10 years out. For all those out there watching, it's not too late to be an organ donor. If you can, go to www.organdonor.gov. Sign up today if you haven't already. Dr. Akshay Sayal, every time I talk to you, you blow my mind. Thanks so much. Anytime. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.